What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here. And today I have an exciting hack that can improve your grinder quality without having to upgrade anything. Now, one of my favorite things to do is to discover hacks that can improve anybody's setup, regardless of what their setup is. It's something I've talked about in forums online. It's something I've talked about on my second YouTube channel and one of my long rants, but it's not really something I have focused on here. There are people who've already been implementing this and have had found some great success. A big issue that I see with home baristas is they will buy something like an EasyPresso J Max, or they'll buy something like the Kinu with Espresso Burrs, or they'll buy something like the Niche Grinder, and they get upset that it doesn't do pour over very well, which is absolutely valid. It, it, they create a much more bimodal style distribution, which tends to kind of mute out a lot of the exciting flavors that you're expecting to get in a pour over. Or if you have like the 64 millimeter HU burrs that aren't great for pour over, oh, maybe I need to get the MPs, which are 200 extra bucks just to make good pour overs. But instead of having to spend more money, there's actually a nice hack that can improve marginally your coffee experience as it is now. Slow feeding. What I need you to imagine are the beans being fed into the burrs themselves. Unless there's some sort of auger mechanism, they're all gonna be hit into that pre-breaker area almost simultaneously. Obviously, the burrs can only absorb so many of those beans at once, but the pre-breakers on those burrs are so much more efficient than the rest of the burr that almost all those beans are being chopped up pretty immediately. And then they're kind of hitting a traffic jam as they're trying to exit the burrs. One of the big issues with this is it causes a lot of those grounds to just sit there and spin until it's their time to leave. Rubbing each other, rubbing each other, rubbing the burrs, rubbing the burrs, rubbing whatever cone or flat burr it is until they finally have time to get out. And the reason is because even if we're grinding pretty coarsely, that slot is only five, 600 microns wide. And so to get a big bean out of that tiny slot, it takes a lot of grinding effort. Whenever you're grinding all that dose at once, it is immediately going in, it's fracturing, and it's trying to funnel into those final cutting teeth all at the same time. And you're not getting true cuts. You're getting some cuts, but you're getting a lot of mushing because those grounds are trying their hardest because of that high centrifugal force to exit the burrs. So they're all fighting to get out. So as they're fighting, they're rubbing each other and making each other smaller and smaller and smaller. Due to a lot of this interfacial rubbing, as well as the burrs continually hitting them, you're gonna have increased heat, which is not great for the taste of the coffee, as well as increased static production from triboelectrification. Triboelectrification, as we talked about in this video here, the Dr. Hinnon paper, is friction that is created from rubbing other materials. Obviously, the grounds being really forced to rub each other over that time period, especially with comb burrs, but also with smaller flat burrs, you're going to have a lot more rubbing against each other, which can skew the results in the cup. So whenever you introduce slow feeding, what you're allowing is a lot less of that mushing going on inside your burrs and a lot more cutting easy way to prove this that they're actually cutting each other and it's not just the burrs is by doing a slow feed test now this is actually something i've been doing for quite some time i've really noticed the big difference in taste on my eg1 there's no auger in it it's direct to the burrs and so i would slow feed it and we get immaculate brews with it things that i thought were absolutely delicious which were way different than when i just dumped all the dose in this is also kind of proven with past particle size distributions that have been done that show the first few grams of any grind are always coarser than the latter part of the grinding. And that's because those first few ones are going and they don't have anything in their way. So they're able to experience the full cutting before a traffic jam begins. And this is actually one of the reasons I think homogenizing the grounds with shaking is so beneficial is because you are vertically allowing a more homogenous mixture of those grounds, which can allow for a bit more even flow of water through that puck. When it comes to auger fed grinders, I think that the difference is a lot more minimal, especially depending on how intense the pre-breaking auger is. Something like the DF83 or the Time More, I think there will be a difference, but not as big of a difference as there is without an auger. And even on the Niche, which has a slow feeding disc, I still find that a little too fast, and I slow feed that uh, if I can, and you have to kind of disable that uh, little button in order to keep the hopper open. Now, if you have the Zerno, if you have an EK43, the difference is very very minuscule, it's very minute. I've tried lots of grinders, but obviously not all of them. So I'm curious what your results will be.
there is a way to slow feed a hand grinder without having to drop the beans in. I've been brewing a lot with the ZP6 lately. It's one of my favorite filter hand grinders, and I've been doing a slow feed style grind on it. But to kind of more so get the point across, I wanted to use the J Max because it's not really known for filter type of coffees. It doesn't do a great job at it. So what I'm gonna do is dump some beans in. I'm gonna allow the full load as I grind and show you what those grounds look like. Now at the same grind size, I'm gonna slow feed. Now slow feeding is very simple. Instead of holding it perpendicular to the ground, you're gonna hold it essentially parallel to the ground. Now I like to do a little shake because obviously when you load it in there, they all fill. It's a lot less resistance because it's feeding essentially one to three beans at a time. You're gonna get a lot more consistent particle distribution, which is definitely ideal for pour over. You can do this for espresso as well, but it's gonna take a lot longer at that fine grind setting. So it's really up to you. Now the speed at which you're hand cranking doesn't matter nearly as much. Uh, obviously, if you're going like as fast as you can versus super slow, that will affect the particle size distribution. But as long as you stay in a pretty consistent cadence, that's gonna give you the best results as far as A, B testing it. So here are the two samples of that same coffee on the same dial. You can immediately see that the one with the slow feed has a coarser grind size. And if you kind of pinch it and, and lay it out, you're gonna see that there are less fines as well. And you can see this even optically. It's gonna allow you to go a little bit finer if that's what you want, or you can stay at that coarser grind size and really experience a whole lot more clarity than you were getting before. The next test is something you can do if you're an espresso lover at home and you wanna see the big difference here. In order to even showcase this though, I will be using the DF83V, which does have an auger mechanism, just to show that even with an auger mechanism, there is gonna be a difference. And then I'll pull a follow-up shot with the DF64, which has no auger, and you're gonna be able to see just how big of a difference that one is. I would have expected due to the auger in the 83V for the time to not be as big of a differential, but as you'll see, it still is pretty massive. In the, center, in the, cup. the slow feed where I trickled it had a much coarser particle peak size, meaning it was going to flow through a lot faster. The water had a more easy time getting through that bed and it finished in about 10 seconds. There's a much slower first drop on the one on the left where we have the fast feed and it hits its final weight in about 24, 25 seconds. Perfect, okay. Now as we move over to the DF64 Gen 2, we have the same experiment. I dumped all the beans in at once and then I just slowly trickled them in. The one on the left takes 28 seconds, whereas the one on the right took only about 12 seconds. So you have a similar depreciation in time over both of these methods, depending on how you dial it in. Which goes to show you that it is truly shifting the particle size more coarsely when you slow feed it. Just because we're going finer on the dial doesn't mean the grounds are finer. It doesn't mean that we're going against what I always preach, which is go coarser. It's saying that the grinder itself is no longer performing at the same way it was previously. It's not spitting out the same particle size. It's spitting out a coarser particle size, which means you need to go finer on the grinder to achieve the same particle size, sands a lot of the fines, and improved particle distribution. We're getting a lot more cuts as opposed to a lot more mushing. I would love if you try this out. Let me know results below on both the espresso and the filter. Let's have a chat about it. I wanna see discussion down below because that is always the most fun part about making these videos, especially with these types of hacks. In the meantime, if you wouldn't mind, please hit the like and subscribe on this video if you enjoyed it and the work I put into it. I have a Patreon below where if you're wanting to support in that way, you can. I do a lot of lives with my Patreon. We have a second YouTube channel where I upload those lives after the fact, but they're only available to those in Patreon during the actual live Q&A session. But in the end, honestly, liking and subscribing is like one of the best ways you can help the channel. So I appreciate you all for watching this far. It's always so much fun to be able to share these experiences with you all and to engage in discussion with the community. Until next time, I hope that you brew something tasty and cheers.